and welcome to the ISTH World Thrombosis Day Ask the Expert series. Today we'll be addressing your questions on COVID-19 and thrombosis, including important information on the COVID-19 vaccines and an update on the latest research. So I'm your host, Dr. Claire McClintock, and I'm a haematologist based in New Zealand. I also serve as Vice Chair of the World Thrombosis Day Steering Committee, and I'm former President of the International Society on Thrombosis and Hemostasis. I'm pleased to be joined by Professor Beverly Hunt, Chair of the ISTH World Thrombosis Day Steering Committee and Professor of Thrombosis and Hemostasis at King's College London and a consultant haematologist. Additionally, Professor Hunt serves on the World Health Organization's COVID-19 Task Force. Professor Hunt, it's great to have you with us today. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be with you, Claire. Good. So, uh, Professor Hunt, we understand that there's a great deal of information regarding the COVID-19 vaccine, and we're here to provide guidance to the public about the COVID-19 vaccines and the risks associated with thrombosis. But I guess on an important note, we really need to point out that we're giving general information only. And if anyone has any specific questions about their own health care, they need to consult with their health care professional. So we can get started, I think. Um, let's begin with the basics. We know that severe COVID-19 can increase a person's likelihood of getting a blood clot. And with that in mind, what would you say are the signs and symptoms that people should be aware of if they're diagnosed with COVID-19? Well, I think we've got different types of COVID. So if you have mild COVID, which luckily most people do, which means you can stay at home and might at the worst have flu-like symptoms, um, the risk of having clots is very small. Uh, there's always a little risk of having blood clots, such as deep vein thrombosis, where you can have pain in your leg which is unexplained um, and sometimes some swelling and sometimes some redness uh, and then uh, the blood clot in the leg can break off and travel around the body to the lungs where it can block some of the blood supply to the lungs and that can cause chest pain and shortness of breath and sometimes people can cough up blood or other times they just get increasingly short of breath but if it's a really big clot, then you block all the blood supply and there's a chance of death, unfortunately. So um, it's much better to prevent them than um, to have to treat them. Right. Now, there's been a lot of discussion regarding the safety of certain COVID-19 vaccines. What would you uh, tell, like to say to the general public about the correlation between the vaccine and blood clots? There are just a couple of vaccines that actually are associated with blood clots and the others aren't. And those that are associated with blood clots have a very tiny, weeny risk of getting blood clots. So for 99% of the population, it's much more important to get the vaccine than to worry about the blood clots. Right. And there's been a lot in the news also about cerebral venous sinus thrombosis or CVST. Can you tell us more about what a CVST is? OK, so when the blood clots were started to be noticed after the vaccine, the first that was noticed was the cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. Uh, and that the cerebral venous sinus runs right down here like a Mohican uh, oh. heck, really. Uh, and it's a big vein that drains all the blood from the brain. And it was noticed that after some of the vaccines, patients were getting cerebral venous sinus thrombosis. And this was occurring sometime after day five after the vaccine. So most people who have the vaccine feel a little bit unwell and they might have a bit of a headache and they might have flu-like symptoms, but they're usually gone by day five. Uh, and these cerebral venous sinuses tend to cause really bad headache. I mean, the worst you have ever had. Um, mm. People feel drowsy and unwell and occasionally they have signs like strokes. They might have weakness down one side or, or have a, a loss of vision. Wow. Okay. So what, what, should, what would you recommend that someone who's had a vaccine um, and gets a headache does? What would, you, what would you say that they should do? 
Okay, well, we're really talking only about two vaccines causing this problem at the moment, um, and that's the uh, AstraZeneca vaccine and the J&J &J vaccine, and they're used in different countries across the world. And if somebody got a headache that was persistent after day five, after the vaccine, we'd ask them to seek health care uh, advice. So uh, what we know about these clots is that they are associated with low levels of some little tiny things in the blood called platelets. And platelets are there to help with clotting uh, and very unusual to find low platelets and a blood clot. So we ask people to go to uh, see a healthcare professional and they, knowing about this risk, will arrange for them to have a platelet count done if they think that they might have one of these very rare blood clots. Because mm, you said it was a very teeny tiny risk. So, um, and, and I think you, you pointed out really importantly that the vast majority of people who have the vac those vaccines won't get a blood clot. So it's still very important for them to go and be vaccinated. Absolutely, because when we look at COVID and what happens to people when they're hospitalised with COVID, then there is a considerable risk uh, of blood clots. And so I would say probably about 10% of patients who end up needing ventilation with COVID uh, will actually have a deep vein thrombosis or and or a pulmonary embolism. So important to prevent having those with COVID by getting the vaccine. Yeah, yeah. So that brings up another question. Um, we've, lots, we've had lots of inquiries from patients who are on anticoagulant therapy and they're concerned about receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. Are patients, who, uh, are patients on anticoagulants able to have the vaccine? Very much so. If we look back, actually, and people have influenza vaccine and no one's ever worried about being on anticoagulation before, and they shouldn't worry about being on anticoagulation uh, with these vaccines. All you need to do is press a little bit longer afterwards. Possibly one might have more of a bruise being on an anticoagulant, but uh, it's just one of those things. If it, people should definitely have the vaccine if they're on anticoagulation. And what about if someone's had a blood clot in the past? Are they at a higher risk of getting the post-vaccine complications? Well, the post-vaccine clots, we've sort of only recognised from the beginning of March. And that's not very uh, long away. And there's an enormous amount of work that has been done. And um, what we do know is there's no predisposing factor. So having had previous clots or having any of the sticky blood problems like factor V Leiden, antiphospholipid syndrome or antithrombin deficiency do not increase the risk of having the clots after the vaccine. So they too should just go and have the vaccine in the normal way. Right. And just again, why do you think it's important for people to receive the COVID-19 vaccine? Well, I've been working with COVID patients since March last year and having seen some very difficult times and some very sick patients with very bad clots, I, I would advise everybody to go and get the vaccine because COVID is a terrible disease. Uh, if somebody gets bad COVID and ends up in hospital, uh, we do see a lot of death. And it's really important that everybody gets the vaccine so that we can stop this becoming a major problem again. Yeah, because it seems also um, it's, it, you're, while older people might be more likely to get the complications or more severe COVID, it can affect young people as well. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's no guarantee that being a younger person won't stop you from getting severe COVID. Um, so when COVID started, uh, it did appear that the older you were, then the more likely you were to have complications. But the problem is these variants that are coming through do mm -hmm. seem to affect people in different ways. And the chances of a younger person having a bad time with COVID 
uh, are probably increased with the new variants. And of course, how you are uh, is also an issue. So we know that obesity is a major factor and other comorbidities. So I think everybody should get the vaccine. Thanks. And so for a final question, can you tell us about any new global research happenings regarding COVID and blood clots? So we have a huge amount of work going on globally looking at why these blood clots occur very rarely uh, after uh, AstraZeneca and J&J vaccines. Uh, and we are finding that it's a, a very rare form of immune response. Um, and there are several laboratories in the world who are defining the immune response. And then in the UK, we have got a group together and we review every single new case that comes through in our country. We've got quite a lot at the moment. And we're building up huge expertise on how to look after these patients. Because this is an immune response, the patients need different treatment from a standard blood clot. Uh, and we make sure that they get it, uh, make sure our country has enough supplies, we make sure that our healthcare professionals understand what they're dealing with, because this is a, a new problem, and it's very important that healthcare professionals get educated about it. So it's putting all of the infrastructure in place so that if it did happen, if a patient did end up with a bad clot after uh, these vaccines, they would get good care in hospital. And good care means that they will do better, definitely do better. And there are a number of really useful guidelines that um, different organisations have put out, including the British Society of Haematology and also the International Society on Thrombosis and Hemostasis that guide professionals and clinicians about how to manage these cases as you are gathering more information, I understand. Absolutely. So we have lots of thrombosis experts across the world who talk to each other. We've got international guidance and we've also got national guidance in the countries that have the most problems. So I, I think that we are cracking how we look after these patients. Um, and uh, I hope that we will move on very quickly uh, and definitely improve outcome and also find the cause so we can stop the problem by changing the vaccine. Yeah. Well, look, thank you so much, Professor Hunt, for your expertise and guidance today. We really appreciate your time. As we know, you're incredibly busy uh, with global efforts to navigate the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so if anyone wants to look for latest updates and information on COVID-19 and blood clots, you can visit the World Thrombosis Day website at worldthrombosisday.org. But I'd like to ask you all to stay well, get vaccinated, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you.